Joe presents Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Hello and you're welcome to Baz and Andrew's bonus episode of House of Rugby here on Joe together with Guinness. Hello Trimby. Hi Baz. For the month of November we're at Ireland playing Italy in Chicago and the Guinness series now back in Dublin in the Aviva. We're going out twice a week, you lucky feckers. So uh, I'll be chatting to Conor Murray about the World Cup goals and injury comebacks and Leinster Munster rivalry a little bit later. But uh, I'd like to take this opportunity, Trimby, if it's okay, because Ireland are playing Italy in Chicago this weekend. Uh, I'd like to discuss what it was like for you playing against the All Blacks in Soldier Field a couple of years ago on that historic occasion uh, for Ireland. Can you take us back to yes, that time? Yes, I can, Barry. It'll, it would be my pleasure Brilliant. to discuss I'm the audience. one and only time <laughs> I beat the All Blacks. <laughs> <laughs> there so four, there I was. <laughs> there were 14 other men <laughs> on my team. <laughs> Uh, but what was it like? What, first of all, what, what was the stadium like playing in, <coughs> in the US? Is there a difference between you know, playing the stadium over there? Yeah, the, not just the stadium, not just the game, the whole week was incredible. The whole buzz, the atmosphere, the kind of ex expectation. The, that week, the Cubs won the World Series um, in baseball. Am I going to get into it like a baseball equivalent of the <laughs> NFL tutorial we did okay, last yeah, yeah. week? What's baseball? Uh, yeah. So um, there was a real buzz about town. There was a parade and everything. And uh, um, there was just a kind of the, the week built and it was new and fresh. Everybody was kind of, um, everybody was waking up you know, early, going for coffees, getting the crack going. It, just, it felt like everybody was on the same page and everybody was excited about the challenge and excited about being in Chicago. and. And it just built and built, and then so it was almost like a welcome <coughs> distraction. Would you say it? Like yeah, that? it just uh, we went out for dinner a couple. Of it was just a really good week for the team to be together, to enjoy each other's company, and to have um, obviously a big challenge at the end of the week. And, and don't get me wrong, there wasn't we didn't expect to beat the All Blacks, but we thought we had as good a chance as we ever had. And if ever we were going to beat them, it was going to be that week because um, we just felt really comfortable with, with the boys around us, with our game plan, um, <clears throat> and our execution kind of reflected that, how ready we were. Mm. Um, but then, so after after the parade for the Cubs, um, winning the World Series, then all the Irish came into town, and that buzz kind of just switched, and it just, it was like, okay, fellas, it's your turn. It's your turn to show off. Yeah. And uh, then, you know, big occasion like Soldier Field, and just everything being so new and so different about it and then everything that came with um, the figure of eight for the Hakka for Axel just added to this really special historical event and it was just, it was honestly one of the most amazing weeks and not, again, not just, there'd be so many test matches I would have played that I wouldn't remember much about the preparation or right. the, yeah. the run up to the game but because it was so unique I just remember everything about it so well and uh, I just look back with incredibly fond memories of the guys that I that um, I kind of shared that experience yeah. with. You don't always have that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think um, Ireland will beat the All Blacks again someday, uh, and there'll be other guy, other teams that uh, beat the All Black, other Irish teams that beat the All Blacks. But we were the only team to beat them the first time. Yeah. And we'll always have been the first team to beat the All Blacks. So that's something that I really cherish and something that means a lot to me, being a part of just such a special occasion and. Um, yeah, it was it was amazing being part of it. Really what, was. Can you remember anything particular from the game or any moments? Like I, I always assume that that game would have been the hardest game you'll have ever played, the most exhausting, the most mm. physical. Was there ever? Was it like that? First of all, was it? Yeah, was it's. It um, I think when you're game? when you're playing the All Blacks, there's a there's a real mental battle because so many teams have have come up against it. Ireland two years before we beat them, there was that uh, game at uh, Viva when we were winning up until the last play of the game and all blacks do what they always do they get back into the game and they won they got the kick at the end and then south africa a couple of weeks ago same thing south africa winning by 14 points or 12 points uh new zealand scored two converted tries at the end of the game there's just a real mental battle that you have to keep playing against the all blacks because they have the expectation they're going to get back into it and Ireland and every other team in the world has the expectation that they're going to get their pants pulled down at the end of the game yeah. and 
if, if you try and kind of become a passenger or lock it down or just shut up shop and not play, just try and please take the phone off the hook, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> please yeah. let this be the result, yeah. then, then, then they do a job on you. And it looked like they were going to do that just after half time. Well, first of all, uh, Naholo scored after five minutes and then a lot of us were thinking, okay, we've been here before, we're going to get hammered. Yeah. And then we got a foothold in the game and we got the, the try off the mall. And then we just started playing and it felt like we were kind of dictating the terms and it was a really foreign feeling like, mm. to play in the All Blacks, feeling like you're in control. And it was, we just were going, right, well, don't change anything. Don't stop. Just yeah, keep, keep doing yeah, what we're doing. Yeah. And then at halftime we had that chat. I wasn't involved in the game at the Aviva when um, they scored in the last minute, but a lot of the guys were obviously. And there was a lot of chat about that at halftime. Rory and, um, and Sexto in particular were saying, we have to keep playing. Please, lads, please keep playing. And it almost trick yourself into thinking you're behind or you're not, not that you're chasing the game, but there's a desperation to keep doing what we're doing to because we're, we were dominant. We we're going so yeah, well. And you have to play like that. You have to keep doing it. And it's so yeah. it's, a, it's such an, an unusual. Yeah, yeah, you have to play the way they play and beat them the way they're playing. And but even despite all that, uh, all that chat at halftime, we still didn't do it. We still went into our shells a little bit That's and it. just back uh, into it. Uh -huh. yeah. But then it was almost even more <clears throat> impressive that we kind of dug deep and then you know got back to an exp expansive kind of accurate execution towards the end of the game. And then uh, it wasn't that we hung on at the end; we were dominant at the yeah, end, yeah. and we took the, the game from them. To go out and play and score <coughs> and shot, score that yeah. try. And no one does that against no. the All Blacks. So yeah. that's why it was so unique. Yeah, hopefully now in the coming weeks, that's the kind of same attitude that they'll take, which I'm sure it is. Um, I haven't been there before, um, and and watching all those the the the, the Tri Nations this year or the Championship down in the Southern Hemisphere. That's the that's the way South Africa beat them is bringing that intensity to it, and and Australia came close the weekend as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's an incredible few weeks for Ireland, and uh, you know as you as you heard uh, Andrew say there, it's a. Uh, you know, there's only one way to do it, and that's to play it. Um, so one lad that was in Chicago with you that time was Connor Murray. I had a chance to catch up with him last week um, with the Pinergy teamed up with, oh, sorry. Can I go back and do that again? Yep. One lad who was uh, with you in Chicago that night was Connor Murray. I had a chance to catch up with him recently when Pinergy teamed up with him as part of their hashtag we are 16 campaign. Uh, and I started off with a question that I suppose would be a little bit <laughs> alternative because I'd be friends with Connor, so I was like, yeah, I, I can't just go ask him a normal question. Anyway, here's myself and Connor. Connor Murray, welcome to Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby. Hello, Baz and yeah. Andrew. This is like a different house, but it's nice. essentially, it's nice essentially all the same. we're in the House of Rugby, okay. all the same. <laughs> uh, last time we spoke at depth, I don't know if you remember, was at a wedding in July. Mm. Yes. I must say, um, your date that night. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. You're on about my mom, aren't you? Your yeah. mother. <laughs> <laughs> what she's, a woman. She's going to tune into this. she would be delighted. Yeah. She thought you were a bit strange. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staring a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You kept looking at her. Like that, at the look. same table and everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, can, I see where you get it from, man. And I've seen your dad in Lycra as well. Oh yeah, 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 he's a fan of it. He's yeah. got a nice set of pins as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of show is this? Yeah, <laughs> this, this is it. This is where, where we we're at. This. this is where we're at. Um, <laughs> but that night, yeah, I think I was trying to draw you out and get mm. some uh, some scoops out of you. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I even knew we were doing this, but uh, I just I was trying to talk to you about the World Cup, and mm -hmm. like, I think I was like, "You're gonna win." The you were giving Cup. me an emotional. Um, yeah, G up talk. I yeah, was drunk. Yeah. You yeah, were driving. It was like we were about to play the final, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, w do you focus at all on the World Cup? Is that something you think about? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, as we said it that night, that we're in such a good position with Ireland at the moment, and um, such good players, such a good buzz about Irish rugby, and obviously the, the coaching staff goes with that too, and. Um, uh, excited about the next time I get to meet up with Ireland. Obviously, the World Cup is a while away, and you think about that. But people said to us before, "I, oh, you'd love the World Cup to be next month." Now, after we beat Australia, you know you're on such a high. But I think this team will just continue to grow. Um, you see, like the new players that we bring in during the the last season, and they just they just flourish in that environment. And um, 
you know, you, can, you just want it to last for as long as it can. And then, yeah, people talk about the World Cup at the end of it, and, and that's hugely exciting. I think um, you told us we could we could win it that night, and um, nothing nothing has changed since we could. You know, um, you know, on our day we can beat we can beat anyone, and, I, and that's a weird thing. I find saying that because I've been in all your squads that if you said something like that, you'd be kind of people would tear you down straight away. Whereas now you're you can do it, and, and you've probably proven it before. So. Mm. Um, why not? Why not say it? Yeah, I think I'm <coughs> going to put my money where my mouth is. I think mm. I'm going to put like a grand on Ireland to win the World Cup. So okay. then I have like something to hold over you and beat you with. <laughs> <laughs> you get good odds. So yeah, we yeah, want to see that slip as well. We want to see that bet slip. Yeah, that's yeah. what Basil Mahoney, a mutual friend of ours, former Munster player, he pulled me on it. He was like, if you believe you're going to win the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, because you seemed really, down. really um, yeah. convinced that night. So. Yeah, so uh, I spoke to, to the lads at Joe and they were like, ooh, I don't know if that's something okay, we something should be encouraging. Do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll You'd see. You'd never know, it could work out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. do it on my own bat and say nothing. But yeah, I'll show you the stuff. Do, please, please. Yeah, yeah. Don't just write it out. Yeah. Official slip. <laughs> please <laughs> I owe you a yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah I think you're right about the <clears throat> the position we're in and like if we have the same players coming through like we did last year mm. by next year I mean I know you're saying that's totally understandable where if you played the World Cup in a month what a good position mm. we could be in but God really think about the age, the age profile, profile yeah. of the players that we have at the moment mm -hmm. and how many more are going to come through as bolters that must be very exciting for for you as suppose yeah. now a more senior more player. senior player now yeah and um, it's it's really enjoyable though. It's really really enjoyable to to be in that group. You know, there's a certain amount of us who have been there for a while, and you know, the likes of James Ryan, um, Jordan Larmer. You know, you've Joey now who have who are just used to winning. Um, you know, obviously Leinster have gone really really well, and the provinces are strong also. But you know, they're just used to winning. They know nothing else, so they come into Ireland and you know they win the Grand Slam and they kind of just go, "Well, oh, that was pretty cool." Whereas yeah. you know, having been through. Not the slog of, of like you've had a few bad days with Ireland and you you know how much it means, but the more and more guys like that you can get in mm. and mix it with that, you know, Bestie is the obviously probably the oldest there and, and the most experienced and you've Johnny and Pete and, and a few more and, and mixed in with all those young guys. I think it's a really good it's a balance you want you want in a squad. So um someone like Tyg Byrne, who's been incredible for a couple of years now and has been incredible with Monster, you can see someone like him adding even more to, to the squad and um, you know, with November around the corner, whether I'm involved or not, probably not with, with the injury, I have not played yet, but you just know the squad's going to flourish and, and that's the frustrating, kind of sickening part of it is you know that there's a potential for like a really big day ahead. Obviously, the, there's other games as well, but like against the All Blacks, you know they're going to be ready for you, you know that they'll have the performance yeah. um, all geared up and um, it's, a, it's exciting as a fan, but then you know yourself as a, as a player looking on when you're injured is it can be tough, especially yeah. when you know the team is gonna is gonna go well. You want them to win, but you know you, there's a video that really wants to be there. It's a hard one to explain to people who don't play. I know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I spent um, enough of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ends, yeah. <laughs> wanting your opposition opposite number yeah. or the person in your Jeez, position. He was really good, wasn't he? Kind of be, <laughs> kind of be average, yeah, 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 but the team yeah. to win. Yeah, I'm totally with you. Exactly. And what do you expect from the team from for the autumn? Do you do you have any um, expectations in terms of how they they should play or? Um, um, yeah, more the same. I think a lot of pe I think when we we did so well in Australia and we won the Test series down there, and we were we were a real tight unit and everything was kind of flowing. And then we haven't really been together. We've been at, I think one one camp. short camp, yeah. and and now the lads will meet up next week and then they go straight to Italy and and the public will probably expect everything to flow as 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 well as it did for the Six Nations when you're together for eight weeks and then <laughs> Australia when you're just over three weeks together so there's a lot of work we'll have to go in in Carton House um, to get back to that level um, but I think like you said the mix of older experienced players and the young guys that, that have been together now for a while it shouldn't take that long to get back to that level um, okay. and hopefully we just kick on again because New Zealand are still the number one team and rightly so and then South Africa have probably closed the gap a little bit more um, mm -hmm. with their performances um, so it, you know it's, it sounds like a cliche. You'll have to be better than you were last year, but it's yeah. true. Like that's why it's probably yeah, a cliche. Um, for sure. So yeah, expecting big things, I suppose. Yeah. And two years since the that fateful night down in or over in Chicago when you beat the All Blacks. Mm. Like, is that still? Would that be the standout moment in your career so far? Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. What a what a just a kind of a dream week. Really get to go to Chicago and um, 
it almost felt the pressure was off because we were away from Ireland and it was just it, it, it had a weird feeling to it. But then, um, I know Trimby talks about that game, how how nervous he was and mm. how he found out, uh, or he taught people to find out how crappy was at rugby. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says. He said That's in the pro, yeah. so people go through all different emotions and yeah. stuff. I remember being with Zeeves, uh, the opposite end of the, the spectrum, so relaxed, and so yeah. relaxed. And he's like, oh man, it's so sunny today. How cool is this? Yeah. And you're like. But isn't that the way he played? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that the way he played that day? There was, mm-hmm. you know, it was free flowing rugby. It yeah. was. And do you feel like that is the way to beat New Zealand? Like you have attack. to play with that attack and mm-hmm. that openness. And even in the game, the the twenty three was it twenty three twenty two? They beat Ian De Aviva that time. Oh, the late, the late, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was, that we was, stopped playing. That was probably the most expansive mm-hmm. that Ireland had, mm-hmm. had played to that date. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it's is that? Do you feel like that's the way to Big beat time, New Zealand? Big time because the. The Chicago game and the, the Aviva game, we got considerable leads, didn't we? We, got, we, were, we were ahead by quite a bit. So I think I played them good. I played them eight, eight or nine times, and there's those two or three um, games, one with the Lions in the summer, where we've won or we've had good results. Um, it's attack them. It's it's play rugby because it's much easier to have the ball in hand and attack them than it is yeah. to than to sit back and defend. Like they're they're incredible athletes, incredible rugby players, um, the best around. So if if you don't attack them, it's going to be a really long, hard day for you. So um, that day we did, even though we got a shot because they scored early, we, we just went out and it's part of our group that we, we've been together for so long and we know what we're capable of. We know when we get the ball, we're able, we're able to attack teams and, and, and punish teams and, and cause teams problems. So um, I think that that's part of it as well, yeah. um, I suppose, early, early on. Yeah, but I think it, when, we, when we've had good results against them, we, we've attacked them. Um, We've confidence in our attack. Um, we we know we can cause teams problems when we when we have the ball, we hold onto the ball, and we like our breakdown has been a really big standout um, aspect of our game for a long time. And yeah. then we know we were confident in holding onto the ball, so that helped it. Um, the fact that we've been together for a long time and we we understand each other as a team and and the ability as a team, we've no fear of holding onto the ball. Whereas probably in my early days playing Irish, playing in the Irish team. Um, against big teams you're kind of just hoping to get through the game get nearly yeah. you know what I mean yeah. you know that feeling where you just I hope you know it's a, it's a decent day I play quite well and I get picked next week you know it's, mm-hmm. it, that, that's kind of the mindset whereas now it's every team we, we go out against and you've heard me and players say it before that we, we genuinely we can win so it's not you don't, you're not really worried about selection next week because it it's about playing today and, and then trying to beat who's in front of you and then if that, that happens then whatever else the selection and all that thing will We'll look, at, we'll look after ourselves down the line. Yeah, and I think the coaching obviously have, have, a, have a huge part mm. of that, and Joe Schmidt and his team, and, mm. and obviously the, <coughs> the provinces as well, and the way they're playing, as you alluded to earlier on, mm. the way Leinster are playing at the moment, the way the, the current Munster form, and the mm-hmm. two big weekends they've had in the Champions Cup, and Ulster starting to show a little bit of form as yeah. well. Yeah. And uh, like, firstly, on Munster, congratulations on your four Cheers, year yeah. sign. Like, it's great as a fan, yeah. delighted <laughs> to have you back. and, and uh, like it, it clearly shows how happy to me anyway. How happy you are in mm. Limerick, in Munster, yeah. in Ireland. Is that would that be fair enough? Yeah, yeah. Despite Steve's best efforts, um, it was an easy decision, a really quick yeah. decision. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he was always on to me. He's like, you should yeah. see this, like, <laughs> like, as if he's uh, Neymar or something in, yeah, in yeah. Paris. But it's great. Like I always, when people would always say the loyal guy will stay. And it's like, I think that's the wrong term. Because, no, no. You know, that, um, that suggests that someone is... Is, is, is not loyal. Yeah, yeah, yeah not loyal it's not, going it's not like that at all. It's a personal decision that you yeah. want to go and I can completely Fully. understand if someone would leave, if mm-hmm. you were to leave. Mm-hmm. But I, I suppose it just shows if you know where you are in your life at that yeah. moment and, and how happy you are mm-hmm. in Limerick. Big time, yeah. Um, Limerick's an unbelievable... Like, born there, grew up there. It's a class city. I, lo- I love living there and then I get to play with my boyhood team like so that that's in itself enough but I think the fact that it was such an easy decision was um you know monster and I've said it for years about like you know we're on the brink of something something like we're close we're getting there after being in semi-finals and semi-finals but this year I like I always believe it anyway but this year more so with the additions we've made Joey, Ty, Mike Haley, um, a few more guys coming in, Neely Cronin, Albie. Yeah. You know, there's quality and, and depth in our squad at the moment. And this squad has definitely learned from its its tough days out the semi finals, which the, the older Munster teams had, had yeah. to go through too. Yeah, I believe um, it, yeah. It's just a, 
not a pity. It's just the fact that we're we are an Irish province and Leinster are the dominant team in Europe at the moment, and mm. we always kind of go. Oh, How is that for you? Yeah, yeah sitting it's, there it's, looking at it. it must be frustrating. It's frustrating, yeah. Like, yeah. and I've good like with the Irish team now. You've genuine mates. I don't know what it was like before, but like yeah. genuine mates on that team have to play for Leinster, and you're you're ha you have to, you're happy for your someone yeah. you're actually friends with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you'd love it to be you, but we have to be realistic, and we're, we're not. We weren't good enough. Uh, remember the the Pro 14 semi-final in the RDS last year. I remember after the game we lost by, I think it was a couple of points by the end of it, but, and it could have gone either way, but at the end of it, I wasn't actually disappointed. I was like, we're actually, they're a better team than us. Like, yeah. And it's rare you feel like that. Oh, you'll always be like, oh, we should have scored a try there and that would have been it. But like, they were actually, they're just a better team at the moment. Yeah. And we've been to semi-finals and two semi-finals last year, so we're not a million miles away. They were an English team and we were like the best team in Ireland. We'd, have, like, we'd be a lot, feeling a lot better, you know what I mean? It's a yeah. weird situation, but um, ultimately they drive you on to, to get better to as get a better. province and, and compete and so close, so, so close. Absolutely, and it, yeah, I agree. You know, the margin will seem way bigger when there's trophies lifted and you are yeah. you lose by a point in the semi-final. Then it can turn like yeah, that so, in one game. Um, it's our main confidence. Yeah, that's great to see the, yeah. the belief from, for you as a senior mm. player and signing for Munster and committing to that and saying all those things about the young players coming through. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there are other players like, you know, the, the Mon Munsters, Baked Beans uh, ambassador, <laughs> <laughs> Keith Earls, who, uh, oh you know, God. how is Isn't he that the funniest thing? Yeah. He's flying it. He's flying it is under he? being flat out in the hinds. Okay. Well, I know was. you're a, you're more of a bachelor's boy yourself. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really agree with his, um, yeah. his ambassador. Likewise. Deal, but that guy will do anything. I know. Earls, he'll literally I do know. anything. He's used he's to going be to the opening of an envelope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you've also got the, the scooter gang that uh, it's yeah. good to see the senior players again <laughs> leading by example. You've got to mix it with everyone. Yeah. You've got to mix There's it. There's four or five of you with little electric scooters now. It's actually so embarrassing yeah. driving around Castle Troy. It is. Them. It yeah, is. Yeah, I, like we live, as the crow flies, probably yeah. a few hundred metres away from each other. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Earlsie's the same. And then I, I'm dealing with the residence committee at the I moment know, that, are, yeah. that are giving out about you. They're saving the flat. We're doing our bit for the environment there. Okay, electric, so you're like... Uh, electric kind of... We're oh, on that buzz at the moment, yeah. And you're like Scooby Doo gang going around solving, yeah, yeah, solving yeah. mysteries and <laughs> talking beans. We're talking beans and yeah. Earlsie, yeah. Well, that's yeah. enough beans talking <laughs> for the time being. Uh, thanks a million for coming in, Connor. Cheers, yeah, we'd love to you. have you on the show uh, Absolutely, again yeah. soon. Get Trimby on here to get be a Trimby weirdo. to be, uh, make me feel awkward. Brilliant. Yeah, Happy brilliant. Days. Thanks, man. Cheers, bud. Great. Thank you. So that was me and Connor Murray, and you can find out more uh, about Pinergy, hashtag We Are 16 campaign on their Facebook page. Uh, yeah, so how'd you? Barry, that, that was that was brilliant. Thank you. I think you've you've a lovely way of just putting the interviewee at ease <laughs> by talking about their mother and their yeah. fa father in Lycra. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Per the perfect tone. Can I do that? Can I do that with uh, You didn't. Uh, you didn't bring up the injury that's been. I just all thought over the press. For yeah, the last yeah, 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 yeah. That would be just typical. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think everyone's been asking about that. So I said I'd, I'd, I'd let him off the hook. We all know at this stage mm -hmm. that it's, uh, you know, it's an. It's an unusual injury, and they're not quite sure. It. I knew we weren't going to go anywhere. I didn't want to get his back up. It's it's kind of it's, the whole thing's a bit of a non-story. He had an injury, and he didn't know when he was going to be back. Exactly. And uh, I think uh, whoever, like him or Van Grand or whoever said, kind of, it, it's like saying being asked a question, saying no comment. Yeah. And you sound more suspicious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but there's nothing really Still there. Doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I think. He's in good form. I, I did talk to him off air, and he's uh, he's pretty pretty confident to be back very soon. Um, I do think he'll be missed massively in the the upcoming games, especially against the All Blacks. I think there's a question of whether we can beat the All Blacks without Conor Murray, which I suppose is something that we need to look at if we're you know going into the World Cup. You'll need someone to replace Sexton and Murray. I suppose two of our biggest players, if for whatever reason they they don't mm -hmm. make one of the bigger games and. So it is no better time than to try that out, but... Yeah, whatever about his, his <coughs> contribution, his kick and his pass and his communication, all that stuff and his leadership, but more kind of what's even more so than any of that is it's another player on the pitch who's been there and done it before and who's beat the All Blacks before. Yeah. And just that experience, it kind of just, it's, it makes it just more realistic for his teammates. Yeah. They'll go, listen, a lot of guys here have done this, so we can do it again. Yeah. 
Okay, right. Uh, thanks everybody for your comments, for your questions, for listening and for watching on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to whatever platform you're listening to this or watching it on. And uh, also I'd like to say a big, big thank you to everyone behind the scenes who made this uh, show possible today. Thank you, Trimby. Cheers, we'll see Baz. you next week. This has been Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby. Thank <laughs> you.